welcome to another session in our course FEA using SOLIDWORKS. So before moving on to the coursework, let's have a brief look at the content that we will be covering in it. So in this session, we will be discussing what a structural analysis is, and then we will move on to discuss what a static analysis is. We will also discuss on how it is different from a dynamic analysis. We will then see what a linear and non-linear analysis are and also where to use them. So the first topic is structural analysis. Here the word structure doesn't just refer to the civil structures such as bridges and buildings but also to mechanical components of all types. It can include gears, bolts, pistons etc. Under working conditions, these components undergo numerous types of loads and forces. So to understand the different stress and strain experienced by these mechanical components, we perform a finite element analysis. By performing FEA, we are able to get the displacement values of the components under load and through that we can get the other derived quantities such as stress and strain. In the previous session, we had seen that there are many special types of analysis such as buckling, fatigue and drop test. These special types of analysis were created for a few specific types of tests. We have special modules in SOLIDWORKS to perform them. But for any other general structural applications, we will be mainly using either static analysis or dynamic analysis depending on the type of study. In the static analysis, we will assume that the forces that act upon the model are quasi-static, which means that the load is acted upon the model, increases very slowly, and thus the acceleration and velocity can be neglected. While on the other hand, in dynamic analysis, the inertial and damping force are considered while we solve the acceleration and velocity of the components. This is done before we find out the stress and strain. In static analysis, when we start a simulation at point A, we get an end result at B. Because of this fixed delivery of results, any data or analysis between the points A and B cannot be relied upon. Only the end result can be used to make a meaningful conclusion. But in the dynamic analysis, the intermediate results which we get at each step of the analysis are reliable and can be used. In short, we can summarize the differences between the two as a static analysis can only be performed upon two conditions. The system being simulated does not depend on time and the loads being applied on the system is constant. A good example for static analysis would be the simulation of a load on a chair. Whereas in dynamic analysis, the system, the load applied or both might change with time. A good example for dynamic would be the simulation of a spring's compression. So depending upon the requirement, one may choose to go with either static or dynamic analysis. Both static and dynamic analysis have two subtypes available, the linear and non-linear analysis. An assumption is made that there is a linear relationship between the stress and the strain in the model throughout the simulation. But once the material crosses the yield strength value, its stiffness starts changing. So in order to capture the non-linear effects, the solver goes back to the material and evaluates the stiffness before proceeding on to the next step. So to capture the non-linear effects, we have to perform the non-linear analysis. Since the stress strain vary linearly in the linear analysis, it could also be said that linear analysis obeys the Hooke's law, which states that the strain in a solid is proportional to the amount of stress applied and the deformations in the linear analysis are not very low, whereas the non-linear analysis, there could be large deformations in the model which are not proportional to the load applied on it. The primary places where we will be using linear analysis is when we know that the forces on the components do not change in direction or magnitude. It is also used when we are trying to simulate one component within a large assembly. A good example would be simulating a bolt in an off-road car. We know that the vehicle will be under a lot of stress and also will experience a lot of forces from multiple directions. And our goal here is to just see how this specific bolt fares under all these conditions and not the entire vehicle. Another place where linear analysis is used is when we don't really expect the component to move much. The last major assumption that is which we are simulating does not go beyond its yield strength. So in this case, where exactly will be using a non-linear analysis? So let's consider an example of a cantilever beam. The beam has a certain dimension of x, y, z and we apply the force of 100 Newton on the top portion of the beam. This causes a deflection in the beam. The developed stress is well within the yield strength of the beam, so all is good. 
this is a perfect example of linear analysis so let's consider a second example it's a similar beam but with a different approach and design when you apply a certain load on the top side of the beam you will notice that after a certain amount of deflection the bottom part of the beam will get in contact with the support bracket which is over here that in turn will change the overall output of the simulation because here we are not just performing a simulation of the cantilever but also the bracket which holds the beam so because of the deflections in the beam the bracket will also have deflections in such situations where the contact point in a system changes in the course of the simulation we tend to use a non-linear approach. If we solve this example using linear approach, then the contact points will not update properly and end up with bad results. So in such cases, we will be considering a non-linear approach instead of a linear approach. Now that we have cleared the cloud on where we will be using linear and non-linear analysis, let's now talk about the different reasons due to which non-linearity is in a material. So the first reason is geometric non-linearity. When the stiffness of the material changes due to change in the shape of the model, then it is termed as geometric non-linearity. This can occur due to an element undergoing very large displacement or rotation. So in such cases, we will have to go for a non-linear analysis to get accurate results. In SOLIDWORKS, even if you go for a linear analysis and if the software detects any large deflections during the course of the simulation, you will be notified about it and will be given an option to switch to non-linear analysis to get an accurate result. Other than geometric non-linearity, we also have material non-linearity. Material non-linearity can occur due to two reasons. The first one is creep and the other one is elastic limit. In creep, if the material is acted upon by a load for a prolonged period of time, its stiffness does not remain constant. Instead, it starts varying with time. Hence, we need to perform non-linear analysis on such cases. Secondly, beyond the elastic limit, any metal would move into a non-linear region, while the non-metals can behave non-linearly within the elastic limit. To help you better understand the two types of non-linearities, we'll do a comparative study of a model. Just notice we have already run the simulations in the SOLIDWORKS software and we'll be just showing the final result to you. First, let's take the model of this metal plate with a hole in it and we'll apply a force of 300 kN on one end while the other end is fixed. We'll run both linear and non-linear analysis on this model. Both the results will have stark differences between them. In the left, you will have the linear analysis and on the right, it is the non-linear analysis. If you look at the results on the right hand side of the results, you'll notice a red arrow mark. It is to denote that the applied force has caused the metal plate to cross the yield strength and get into the plastic region. In the plastic region, the stress strain relation is not linear. Because of this, the amount of deformation and stress developed in the metal is much lesser than the linear assumption taken in the linear analysis. Because of this, we cannot consider the results of linear analysis in this condition. Apart from geometric and material non-linearities, we also have the contact non-linearity, which is caused by changing status of contact throughout the simulation. We have already discussed the contact non-linearity in the video a few minutes ago. The cantilever beam with the support bracket is a perfect example for contact non-linearity. So uh, let's have a summary of the things that we've learned in this video. In this video we learned what is static analysis and where we use it. And we've also seen what a dynamic analysis is and what the difference between static and dynamic analysis is. We then proceeded on to the types of static and dynamic analysis. We talked about what a linear analysis is and what a non-linear analysis is. We discussed the difference between linear analysis and non-linear analysis. In the end, we discussed the various types of non-linearities. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, in the next video, we will be showing you how to transition from the modeling environment in the SOLIDWORKS and into the simulation environment. 